This is the Master Chef Kitchen, where for one home cook, dreams will become a reality. After searching across the entire country for America's finest home cooks, we've narrowed it down to 18. I'm a food photographer. I'm a graduate student. I'm a stockbroker. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for me. But to earn the title of Master Chef, they must impress three of the biggest names in the culinary world. Joe Bastianich. The hallmarks of a Master Chef are elegance, sophistication, and finesse. Graham Elliott. To me, a Master Chef is constantly innovating. And Gordon Ramsay. A true Master Chef was perfection on every plate. Tonight, the competition officially begins. We're looking for one stunning dish. And with that comes twists. What the heck is going to happen now? Turns. Oh, fire! Fire! And tears. <laughs> the search for America's next Master Chef begins now. Thousands of cooks have already been eliminated, and only 18 remain in the search for America's next Master Chef. Now, it's time for these top home cooks to take their place in the Master Chef kitchen. Walking to the MasterChef kitchen for the first time is incredible. It's such a beautiful kitchen. You know, it's the kitchen that I've always dreamed of. MasterChef kitchen even has its own bar and restaurant. Man, this is crazy. It's freaking awesome. I have never seen so many glorious bottles of wine. The workstations are so spacious, and they're beautiful. They're glistening. They're just calling us to come cook. There's this huge lounge, like every cookbook I could ever hope to own. It's just a dream. Come up here and join us. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. Like, if you take every culinary equipment and you throw it all together, and then you cover it in gold, and then dip it in chocolate, and then put it on a pedestal, that's the MasterChef kitchen. You have arrived. This kitchen is your culinary theater of dreams. Because for one of you, this is where you're going to lose the label of a home cook and be given a brand new title. One of you will be crowned America's next master chef. Now, there's only one way to find out who that is. Please, make your way to your stations. You will not find a more state-of-the-art kitchen anywhere in the world than this, let me tell you. Each of you has a brand new set of MasterChef three-piece knives made by Global. It's time to start finding out which of you home cooks really have the potential to earn the title of America's next MasterChef. The best way to do that is with your very first mystery box challenge. Each of you will have to prepare, cook, and present one awesome dish using only the ingredients hidden under those boxes. The person with the best dish today will have a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. Cook every dish like your life depends on it. On the count of three, you lift those boxes. The mystery box challenge, it's exactly like when I open up the fridge and there's a couple of this, a couple of that, which happens to me every single night. One. Two, three, lift. Wow. I'm trying to figure out, like, what is, what is that? I have no idea what to do with it. I see this beautiful duck breast. My heart lifts because I know how it tastes. I've worked with it before. You've all got the most amazing duck breast. Kale, rhubarb, dark rum, sweet potato, five spice fresh bananas, and some maple syrup. Prove to us that you truly belong here in this kitchen. People, when they lift that mystery box, they can see exactly what's underneath there. I have to listen to what the judges say when they list the ingredients and try to commit that to my memory. Your 60 minutes starts from now. Good luck.
very, very exciting challenge. Yeah, absolutely. So many possibilities. I think yeah. at this point, with so many contestants, it's really about strategy, right? Yep. I think the banana is the devil in the box. It's really the only thing that you couldn't put with the duck breast. I'll tell you what I want to keep, okay? okay. So, Christine has an aid, but uh, under no circumstances can her aid interfere with the dish. I want to keep the kale. I want to keep the sweet potato. I want to keep the duck. I think she's at a bit of a disadvantage to learn how to work together. With the 18 now, this is your first chance to really scare and intimidate scare. people, too, exactly. and be like, this is what I'm all about. What would you do? I would start off by rendering that duck fat off the duck breast. I'd blanch the kale and then sweat that off in the duck fat, bake the sweet potato, and do a really nice caramelized rhubarb with aged balsamic vinegar mm -hmm. sauce. I am going to pan sear a duck breast with a sweet potato puree and sauteed kale in the duck fat. But the fact that there's no elimination on any of this does help me feel a little more relaxed. Take full advantage of your 60 minutes. One stunning dish. At first, I saw that duck breast, and it was stunning, and I was really excited. But then I started thinking that I have a great dish for that that I kind of want to hold on to and bring that out later in the competition. So I'm thinking right now, I just do what I know I can handle, which is a rhubarb little tartlet, it's kind of like a crostata. I'm confident because there's a few people who I think might be a little wet behind the ears who might be trying to put too much on their plate. Scott, what are you cooking? A profiterole. What? A l larger profiterole with yams and a little bit of duck in there. This is like a serious competition. I'm being very serious about this. Duck profiterole doesn't sound serious to me. Right, Samantha, what are you doing? A uh, five-spice pan seared duck breast of a sweet potato rhubarb puree. Sweet potato rhubarb, they go together? I think so. Ever tasted it before? No, but I know what they taste like individually, so. But well, don't we all? Good luck. Come on. Get creative. Cold pan, cold oh, pan. Man. Felix, what's going on? Are you going to try to pan roast this and get the fat rendered? Yeah. It works better when the pan's on. You might run out of time. I think that's good. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. Very interesting indeed. Becky, I mean, she's going for dessert. Mm -hmm. The rhubarb tart. So look, we're working on both hands at the same wow. time. Yeah. I love the way she's multitasking. Absolutely. I'm really concerned about Samantha. Would you put sweet potato with rhubarb? Oh, that sounds disgusting. So Felix says she's going to bring her, you know, restaurant experience. Yeah. But her duck, I put my whole hand in the pan. It's not even on. It could be good if done right. Yeah. So Scott, I don't know what zone he's going into. He's doing a profiterole with sweet so, potato and duck breast. Profiteroles are a dessert, and they remain a dessert, and they shouldn't be tampered with. Absolutely. Now. You should be working on your finesse and making sure everything you put on the plate has a reason. OK, five minutes left, guys. Five minutes. Right, Tali, how are you feeling? Fire. Fire? You got a fire. Stand back. Just stand back. So does it. I got it. I got it. Fire. Fire? You got a fire. Stand back. Just stand back. So does it. I got it. I got it. I yell fire, and uh, Chef Ramsay comes over so uh, valiantly. So, yeah, no, I just burnt my hand when I had the clock, and it's fine. Like a knight in shining armor. Everything's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Brilliant. Very okay. brave. Thank you. Okay. You set the place on fire. <laughs> what? No, it's not funny. You're what right. You're right. Trust me, you've got your neck in a noose. Be careful. It's crazy. I think that's just the lack of experience and you're seeing a lot of people who didn't know what to do or trying to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Here we go. 60 seconds to go. Finish your touches to those plates. Clean those plates beautifully. 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Woo! Well done. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges now take one final look to identify three standout dishes.
We've now chosen three dishes that stood out, really stood out. The first person who would like to invite down is... You know that you want to call my name. Please, please call my name. Ryan, let's go. I'm really not surprised that my plate is one of the top dishes. These other cooks are gonna have to step up their game if they're gonna wanna compete with me. The next person we'd like to invite down is... Samantha. Let's go, Samantha. I was one of the only people that decided to do something truly new. I think a lot of people are gonna be jealous of me. The third person. Please come down. Scott. Let's go. My mind is just racing. I, I, I know that I wasn't 100% proud of this dish. It was not executed properly. Congratulations. I mean, your three dishes stood out. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. <laughs> you managed to cook what we think are the worst three dishes of this mystery box challenge. Listen carefully. This season, we've rewritten the rule books, so none of you should ever get too comfortable in this kitchen because we could ask you to leave at any time, starting now. What? We're all gobsmacked. We just can't believe it. It's crazy to me, and I'm just like, what the heck is going to happen now? OK, we'll taste all three dishes. Whoever we decide has plated the absolute worst dish will be handing back their apron. Ryan, bring your dish up the station, please. Let's go. I made a balsamic rum glazed duck breast with some caramelized bananas. You proud of this? It's rendered to the point of being dry. Yeah, you may have some crisp on the skin, but bananas? I mean, it's like, is this a joke? It looks like you plated it and then stepped on it. Sadly, the cook on the banana is better than the cook on the duck. Bananas right. with duck. You've gone bananas. That's what's happened. You've gone bananas. The hero of the dish, in my mind, should have been the duck. You have managed to cook the duck. Everything else around that is dreadful. Samantha, your dish, please. Thank you. What is it? Um, it's pan-seared duck breast over a sweet potato rhubarb puree, so with a eggplant napoleon. You know that that's not cooked, right? So. And we put it on a plate. Raw duck and, like, the leaning tower of dryness. This is not what we're looking for. This is bad on so many levels, it's kind of hard to explain. Scott, let's go. Um, what is that? It's a, a profiterole with uh, a mashed uh, sweet potato and a slice of the duck. Two whole duck breasts equates to three miniature slices of duck. Where's the rest of it? I honestly got scared. It's embarrassing, Scott. Well, at least after the raw duck, we have a duck that has actually seen the frying pan. You thought it would impress us that you could put a slice of duck breast in a profiterole? A little over-creative. Over-creative. Delusional. Three embarrassing dishes. I'm scared. If they call my name and they send me home, I'm going to be the first person out of the 18 gone. Yeah. It would be devastating. Yeah. Scott, one step forward, please. Yes, Chef. We're disappointed. Luckily for you, there are two dishes worse than yours. Back on your station, please. Yes, Chef. Ryan, Samantha, one of you has just cooked their last dish in this competition. My dish looks 10 times better than his dish. How is this even possible? 
Even though my dish might have been uglier in presentation, it was still edible. The person leaving the competition, they cooked the worst dish. I just wanted to say that I'm not, definitely not ready to go home yet. And you were right, the hero of this dish was the duck. And out of the two of us, I'd say that the duck was better executed by me. I don't and that, care. Um, and you guys can't eat raw duck. No begging, you're in this competition, competing, not judging. Let's get that right. Have some respect for your fellow contestants. The person leaving the competition that cooked the worst dish in our first mystery box challenge belongs to... The judges have already singled out the two worst dishes. Out of the two of us, I'd say that the duck was better executed by me. No begging. And now, for the first time, someone will be stripped of their apron and sent home from a mystery box challenge. The person leaving the competition that cooked the worst dish belongs to... Samantha, please take your apron off and place it on your station. You're leaving the competition. I'm definitely sad to leave the Master Chef kitchen this early. I didn't think my dish was the star of the challenge, but I didn't think it was the loser of the challenge. It was definitely a learning process. It is giving me more zeal for, for my passion, and uh, it's not gonna stop me. I don't mean to be a hater, but man, come on. Ryan, for him to throw Samantha under the bus like that was a bitch move. Ryan, back on your station. You can never feel safe here, and I think that that's exactly what they were trying to tell us. So you better be bringing your A game every single day. Winning every challenge, every pressure test results to so many advantages in this competition. And today, the glory does belong to somebody because their dish stood out above their competition. That dish belongs to... Felix, congratulations. Great job. Bring your dish down, please, honey. It's a huge validation. This is definitely one of the proudest moments that I've had in my life. Come and stand over here. I'm trying to just be humble and, like, you know, keep my composure, but I don't think that Felix deserved to win. Which sucks. <laughs> I'm so bummed. Great job. Really good job indeed. I did a Chinese five spice seared duck breast, and I did a sauce for it, and eggplant and sweet potato chips. Phenomenal execution. Very nice. The sauce and everything on the plate really works. We recognize it immediately as being restaurant quality, and the flavor is fantastic. Oh. Thank you so much. Felix is now a front runner. Competition is on. So, Felix, for winning today's Mystery Box Challenge, you're coming with us to find out your huge advantage in the next challenge. Let's go. Well done. As the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, Felix is now the first home cook to enter the Master Chef Pantry. Here, Felix is in control of the first elimination test. Each elimination test will see at least one person leave the competition. I'm surrounded by the most amazing fresh produce. It was the most beautiful pantry I had ever seen in my life. Felix now gets to choose the style of food or the dish that everyone must cook. However, the one thing she cannot control is the theme of the challenge. That is in the hands of the judges. Today, you'll be cooking one of our three most intimidating dishes. I'm down. Even though I was practically raised on it, it's a dish that uh, intimidates me because it's so difficult to execute. And it's a dish that takes me back to my grandmother's kitchen and my mother's kitchen. It is Italian risotto. And risotto refers not only to rice, but the technique involved in making it. Because as opposed to steaming it or boiling it, we saute it. There is one dish that always gives me the chills. Because you can't hide behind adding different little touches and ingredients and garnishes. Classic New England clam chowder. Five ingredients, potatoes, cream, onion, pork, clams. All of those things, at the end of the day, they sound easy, and that's what makes it a hard dish. 
to me, the most intimidating dish is the one I'm well known for. It's like a work of art. You seriously have to follow every step religiously. Any idea? Your notorious beef wellington. It's exactly that. It scares the hell out of me. It's so intimidating. It takes years of practice. Phoenix, out of Joe, Graham, and my dish, what dish are you going to choose? I choose. The theme of today's elimination test is our most intimidating dishes. We gave Felix the choice of one of those three dishes that give us the most anxiety. The dish that Felix chose was a stunning risotto. My whole stomach sinks, and I feel a little nauseous because I've only made risotto once in my life, and it was not very good. Risotto's not intimidating to me because I've made it before, and I'm comfortable doing it in a short period of time. Felix. Yes. For winning the mystery box challenge, you don't have to cook it. Yeah! You're safe. Go enjoy your safety up in our gallery. Thank you. What an amazing position to be in. At least one of you will be eliminated on the back of this risotto. So make sure it's not you. All of you have got 45 minutes to make a stunning risotto. Your 45 minutes starts from now. Off you go. As Felix enjoys the safety of the Master Chef Lounge, the remaining home cooks must now choose the necessary ingredients to make one stunning risotto dish. Butter. I need butter. At the end of the challenge, at least one more person will be sent home. Is there butter in here? My eyes lit up. There was molecular powders, xanthan gum, tapioca maltodextrin, sodium alginate, pretty much everything you need to make awesome risotto. Risotto. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can't really use cayenne and a blast of this or a blast of that, you know, to really mask some of the subtle errors that you might be making. Or shellfish, either clams or scallops or mussels or shrimp. Everyone else can see what's in the pantry. I can only really cook with ingredients I know about. Innovation is going to be a big challenge for me. Wow, some half full baskets, some full baskets. If you were out there right now, what kind of risotto would you be doing? Something super simple, one ingredient. You have, you have to season all the way through. You have to season the onions when they go in. You have to toast the rice, add the wine, burn the alcohol out, more salt, make sure your stock is seasoned. I mean, there's a lot of balance here. Mm -hmm. You cannot rush a risotto. Okay, Frank, how's your rice coming? So far, so good. What would your family think if you get sent home on a risotto? My dad would definitely break my balls. Dave Mack. Yes, sir. Flavor, what are you doing? Uh, I got some white wine, butter. I got the morels. I know those have a nice flavor to them. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Felix, how you feel up there? Good. Hi. Hot up here. It feels really nice to just be able to watch from above what everyone's cooking style is. It looks like Tali has never made risotto before. It looks like Dave Mack has never made risotto before, as well as Scott. He's not using a classic technique, and there's reasons why techniques are developed. I'm going to make a poblano risotto for them today. I'm going to add a little scallop on top and uh, see where we go from there. Hello, Helene. What do you think? Um, I think it's actually done. The texture is telling me that it's really close. Did you taste that rice? Yes. I taste cooked to you? Well, it's getting there. One, two. Yes, sir, chef. One, two, three, four pans going. What are you doing? I'm going to make risotto with green and yellow beans, white asparagus, mm -hmm. and sun-dried tomato. Not keeping things simple. I'm going to see how things turn out, and I'm going to go from there. Last 15 minutes. Here we go. So with 15 minutes left, we should certainly be adding the first consommés to our final risotto. The rice should be toasted. The onion should be wilted. You're starting to see the rice swell a little bit, gaining volume, yeah. working it, working it, working it. Who do you think is going to be uh, doing something delicious? I think that Frank will do a good risotto, exactly. because I think yeah. he's eaten it before. Dave Mack? He's got a pot 
like this, where it's literally like just making us porridge. Right. I think Tali is kind of really out of in, out of his comfort zone. His technique is all. You put cranberries in there. I mean, there's certain things that never go in a bloody right. risotto. Yeah. Cranberries, one of them. He doesn't know when to stop. He doesn't know when to stop. I mean, I'm seriously concerned. He is in hot water. Five minutes to go. Use the time wisely. In this risotto elimination challenge, many are struggling. Oh, my God. By the end of tonight, another one of these 17 home cooks will be leaving the Master Chef kitchen. Taste. Start thinking about the execution. Everything. 60 seconds to go. Come on. Shake the plate. Let the risotto relax. Season. Butter in. Cheese in. You want rich lava. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Everybody. Well done. And the sad news tonight, somebody will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. The judges will taste each risotto dish. Then the three worst dishes will be singled out and one of those home cooks will leave the competition. Okay, let's start off. Back row, Monty. I'm a little freaked out right now, but I'm not going home. I came here to cook and I came here to win this. This is a risotto made with white wine and chicken stock <laughs> with a pancetta, pine nuts, sun-dried tomato, and sure. white asparagus. It does not look like a risotto, does it? Uh... They don't look like that. Ever. So there's the risotto down there. You've got to dig for this one. The pancetta is crispy. That's the nice thing about it. Unfortunately, your garnish tastes better than the actual body of the risotto. Have you ever eaten risotto before? No. That's bizarre. Did I've never eaten risotto? How are you holding out? Doing all right. The thing is, as whoever you're cooking it for is getting the bite, they should get a tiny little piece of asparagus, a little pancetta, all those things, not huge, long pieces that don't really fit on a fork and are just garnished on the top. Thank you, Monty. The judges, they expect us to be at a certain level, and I was far below that level. Frank, let's go, please. Everybody's looking at me to make the quintessential Italian dish. So, yeah, I'm feeling the pressure. I'm feeling that I need to bring it. What do you got for us? Clam, artichoke, and blood orange. Pancetta, basil, toasted fennel seeds, and guajillo pepper. You guys are going to be looking at me because I'm Italian, so I wanted to do something different and hopefully impress you. Well, it worked. Bravo. Thank Good you job. So much. Look at the texture in that. That's what I love in risotto, you know, being able to, to stir and find all the little goodies yes. hidden in there. Uh, Frankie, you ain't playing around, dude. That's pretty <laughs> good. Thanks, guys. Frankie. Frank, the light bulb's on, right? That's it, baby. There we go. All right, David, please. I need to start making a name for myself in this kitchen, or else I'm going to go by the wayside, and I can't have that happen. In the veal stock risotto, I put portobellos and some oyster mushrooms, gooseberry roasted poblano, and some scallops. Making risotto and using veal stock at the same time is a very dangerous game. You nailed it. Thank you. Really good job. This is one of the best things I've tasted in a long time. Oh, it's, oh my god. It's delicious. The poblano, the, the cook on the rice is perfect. The layering of flavors, well done. Oh, my god. Helen. Wow. Um, what is that? That is saffron risotto topped with scallops that are crusted in a red peppercorn smoked sea salt wrapped in burdock root. 
So visually, when you can still see the center of that bright brain of rice, what does that mean? That it's perhaps undercooked? Perhaps, it's not perhaps, it's definitely undercooked. The basket. What the f is that? A basket. Oh, God, I could scream. The scallops are still raw. I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the MasterChef trophy. I'm thinking, nah. All right, guys. Do you guys understand the spirit of this competition? What we're looking for here? Scallop basket. Go in the garbage basket. We're not fooling around here. We're looking for specific things. It's not a game, and you're not here to waste our time. You understand? Yes. The rice is undercooked, and the scallops are a joke. Do you guys understand the spirit of this competition? What we're looking for here? Scallop basket. Go in the garbage basket. The rice is undercooked, and the scallops are a joke. They really seemed offended by these creations that I made. But at least I went to the edge of my comfort zone. I tried something new. I didn't nail it. I screwed it up. Christine, let's go, please. I sauteed some uh, onions with scallops and chicken stock that I had infused with smashed garlic and chili peppers. You were um, almost frazzled by this dish. You have a extraordinary palate, but I think that one is subpar. Next up, Ryan. We have a portobello dried shiitake and morel mushrooms. I made a duke cell out of the three of them so that I can incorporate the mushrooms in every bite. The consistency of the risotto itself was spot on. Good technique on the rice. Good job. Thank you very much. All right, Scott. So I'm starting to do this. This elimination challenge is definitely a, a chance for me to redeem myself with the judges. It, it means everything to show them that I can not only just bounce back, but actually really shine. You think this has it? Is this going to be good? I went back to where I normally cook. I want as simple and core as I could to let the risotto speak for itself. Seven ingredients in this entire dish. The texture's nice. Thank you, Chef. Huge improvement over the last dish that we saw. spirited effort, and uh, welcome back to the uh, contest. Thank you, Jim. So the next risotto we want to taste is from Tali. Joe is definitely the scariest judge. He's the judge to win over. And if I can do that, then the MasterChef title is definitely mine. I made a pistachio, cranberry, cherry, and gooseberry risotto. What's this? What is this baby powder looking stuff here? That's hazelnut and walnuts mixed with some tapioca maltodextrin. I wanted to give it a little bit of um... You know what it is? It's garbage is what it is. What you did on that dish is inappropriate and ultimately kind of disgusting. Congratulations. The cranberries, the nuts, the gooseberries, already just unheard of in a risotto. That is a disaster. Damn. Serve as your best. Anybody. Damn. Last but not least, Dave Mack. I'm looking at my dish. The plating, everything was fantastic. My dish came out exactly how I wanted, and I feel very confident. What we have here is uh, some morel mushrooms, some portobello mushrooms, use some veal stock, a uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Did you wash the mushrooms? I didn't wash them out completely. If they're not rinsed super well, right. especially the morels, it's like a dirt sponge. And you taste that, and it's just gritty. It's just really bad. Don't grab a morel. Can you tell me what to avoid? I'm here to eat the dish, or should mm -hmm. I eat selectively? As you wish.
little too sandy for me. Big mistake. Guys, some basic stuff like feeding us sand and things like that, not good. I screwed up, but uh, I hope that they're able to see through that and still see my culinary greatness. We've tasted some fantastic risottos, and sadly, some disastrous risottos. We now need to come up with a decision. The judges must now decide which home cooks are the bottom three. From these, one more person will be sent home tonight. Good job, Christine. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Monty? It just shows the inexperience. Right? Aline? Aline is a disaster. It's Aline was shocking. According to them, it was like way undercooked. You're not the worst. She is. And Tali, I mean, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what Tali is no. up to. Dave? The sand, you know, big, big technical error. I didn't wash the mushrooms. And I think I started too late. Any freaking dish but risotto, man. Like, seriously. He's too good. Tali, dude. I know. Ryan and Tally are the two people that I want to see go home. They're just total idiots. And if they don't stay on their toes, I'm going to be the one to take them out. Clearly, we have to take them out. Put the words right out of my mouth. No, they send them home, dude. I'm going to have to throw some under the bus. Once one of them's gone, the other one's... Remember, you're the best. How do you feel? Good. All right, guys. Back to the stations, please. Thank you. There were two standout risottos. The first one belongs to Frank. Great job. <laughs> However, there was one that stood out, head and shoulders, above its competition. That dish belongs to David Martinez. <laughs> Both of you will become team captains in the next stage of this competition. But you know this elimination challenge comes with a departure. There were three dishes that stood out, all for the wrong reasons. And at least one of those three have cooked their last dish in this competition. The first dish that was out of character, bland, subpar, and on the verge of an embarrassment, that dish belongs to Dave Mack. Come down here, please. Please stand over there. Thank you. This next dish had very bizarre flavors and techniques. Helene. The third of the worst dishes had a mix of ingredients that made no sense, didn't even seem to know what a risotto was supposed to be. That dish belongs to... I'm just trying to not lose my grip on my countertop because I know I'm going to be in the bottom three. I know it. The third of the worst dishes had a mix of ingredients that made no sense, didn't even seem to know what a risotto was supposed to be. That dish belongs to Tally. Those three risottos were embarrassing. Who do we send home? I did what the challenge asked for, you know? So I, I feel safe. I screwed it up. My risotto was undercooked. I'm feeling, quite frankly, scared. My food tastes great. What do the judges want? Why didn't they see it on my plate? Dave Mack, one step forward, please. You can't turn out undercooked rice with every mouthful just full of grit. Dave, you are not safe. Stay there, please. Helene, your dish was really bad. We were bitterly disappointed, but it wasn't one of the worst two. Back to your station, please. Thank you. Thank you. Tali, you're not safe either. Your dish was confused, bizarre. It's almost like you're trying to outsmart your competition. 
You can bamboozle every amateur behind you, but you cannot bamboozle us three. Let me tell you. Sorry, chef. I just didn't. I didn't this is my first time cooking a risotto. Charlie, stay there. Based on that risotto, the person leaving is Dave Mack. Time is done in this competition. Please put your apron on your station and leave the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I'm disappointed, but at the same time, I'm glad I got to compete at this level. The judges did make a mistake by sending me home. Uh, I have a lot of creativity. Thank you very much. What can you say? You know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Tali. I've dodged that bullet. I'm telling you, you are flying by the seat of your pants. Back on your station. Thank you so much. Woo. That's the sigh of relief. I dodged the biggest bullet of my life, and I don't want to be in that position again. Next week on MasterChef, it's the first team challenge of the season. Yeah! And the surviving home cooks are going to war. Hit the deck! Each team will battle it out to feed America's heroes. Get a grip and wake up! And the losers will go head to head in a pressure test. I can't believe this is happening. It is what Satan himself would fear. When one more MasterChef hopeful's journey comes to an end. Honestly, I think I'm gonna be going home. <laughs> one potato, two potato.